our first speaker, um, our first guest, uh, is uh, Denise Vivar, who is the interim specialist in, uh, at the Immigration Student Success Center at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Uh, Denise serves as VAL's main partner at the Student Success Center, uh, where we provide immigration legal services for immigrant students and their families, as well as support for the school staff. Uh, this past summer, we worked together with them to ensure that DACA recipients were able to renew their status ahead of the Supreme Court decision, which at least temporarily kept intact the program uh, against the proposed termination by the Trump administration. Uh, the future of DACA and many other immigration programs will really be determined uh, by what is going to be the most decisive elections of our lifetimes. Uh, and our partnership with the Immigrant Student Su Success Center will be even more critical moving forward. So Denise, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here this morning. So I am, my name is Denise. I'm the interim specialist at the Immigrant Student Success Center. Uh, this center was the first one created in a CUNY and it is a welcoming and safe space that helps students develop emotional well-being a sense of community and belonging and empowerment. The center values and understands the experiences and documents the students bring to higher education and works to help them develop their unique gifts. With this mission statement in mind, we seek to provide a range of services to empower students to succeed inside and outside the classroom. We provide mental health support, deportation defense, postgraduate support, collaborative programming, uh, financial guidance and an emergency fund, and legal services. This is where VOLS comes in. Uh, VOLS, this partnership started over the summer where VOLS really helped us provide legal services to our students and their families. Uh, during the COVID pandemic, it was very challenging for our students. They were navigating multiple issues. A lot of the parents lost their income. They lost their income. Um, as we know, a lot of the immigration, a lot of the COVID relief uh, was not available to them and their families. So they were really struggling with that. Um, and then on top of that, a lot of the students that we work with were affected by the Supreme Court ruling. Um, so there was a lot of things happening all at once for them. And Vols was there to sort of help us provide that legal guidance to our students. Uh, we hosted a DACA info session where 42 faculty joined because we believe that in order for students to be supported in higher education, the faculty must be informed about immigration policies that affect their students' academic success in the classroom. Um, we have also, uh, with VOLS, we have also worked with, um, to provide legal screenings, not only to students, but their families. Many times high school, high school students going into college students and college students don't know that they are immigration relief forms that they do qualify for until a legal screening is done. And many times, a lot of the students also already qualify for something that their parents are applying, but the lack of communication between families prevent the students from sometimes finding out. And it is through these legal screenings that our students are able to see um, if they do qualify for an Im immigration relief form and how we move forward. Um, and I know even from some of the screenings that have been hosted, a lot of the students that qualify for SIDS, right, we're able to catch them early before they age out and we're able to support them through that process. Uh, we are also working on a different variety of forms of immigration relief. A lot of the students that we work with are afraid, right, of a virtual legal screening or they're even like, why am I even going to apply um, for a legal screening if I don't know? So we're working on a series of different workshops where anybody could join and just learn different information. Um, and then from there, they could decide from themselves if they do want a legal screening, if they do think that there is uh, an immigration relief form. So we also want to give students that agency. Um, and in terms of challenges for the future and seeing, I'm not sure if the challenges will change or they, even before the COVID pandemic, we were already offering legal screenings um, because it is something that is needed. Um, but I do know that immigration legal services will always be needed by our students. Um, and I think our collaboration with VOLS will continue to help us evaluate where to best serve students and where to best serve their needs as we keep going. Um, and 
as you know, as we hear for any immigration law changes or any new developments, it will be sort of on a kind of base-to-base -base, um, evaluation on how we could better serve them and continue supporting them. Thanks so much, Deesa. And, and, and just one quick question. In the next three to six months, what is your top priority or hope? And, and I know that there's something on the calendar about 20 days from now. Yeah, I think my main priority is at the moment students' mental health. Um, and I think that it it's important because they're also, you know, these are students that are expected to to go to school and graduate. And many times there's no, you know, pathway to citizenship, so they don't have a work permit. Um, so whatever comes out in the next month, um, I believe it's going to be in a way detrimental, whichever way it goes, um, because that's really like affected them. And then from there figuring out, I, like again, a lot of this is uh, legal services because a lot of these things are constantly changing. Um, so this is where VOLS in a way has, like this is where I see our collaboration with VOLS going to kind of see where are the gaps and how we could keep informing the community I serve. Great, thank you so much, Denise, and thanks for the great work that you do. Next